so for the next maybe uh, three classes or so we'll be studying fully differential op amps okay so uh, actually before that so we have a couple of uh, projects coming up for you okay one of them will be designing a two stage uh, op amp that will be announced later today it will be due maybe in maybe 10 days or 10 to 15 days um, the other project will be designing a fully differential op amp so once we you know finish this up then we'll announce that also okay that will probably be due maybe uh, around in some time or maybe yeah okay around that time so we have what a month left till in some start right so yeah so you can have two weeks for this two weeks for that okay So let's take the op amp we have designed so far. Right, this is the uh, this is the op amp we have designed so far. This is an open loop, and we take the same thing and use it in some kind of configuration. So let's say. use it in some kind of feedback configuration like this right so what is the gain of this op amp what is the gain of this op amp circuit minus r2 over r1 right okay so first of all the things uh, of importance to us is that both vi and vo are defined with respect to ground right because even though your original op amp was differential when you apply the feedback and so on your output is single ended and you are going to define both signals with respect to ground okay so what is the problem with defining it to ground with respect to ground is there a, can you think of any problems okay so obviously the grounds may may not be the same so you could have a very very long line something like this right your actual ground could be quite far away the actual ground connection okay so what does that give us it gives us some maybe some inductance some resistance now let's see this is your actual ground so you have some inductance and resistance because of could be a number of things could be routing right the grounds need not be right next to each other okay okay so let there be inductance and resistance so what is there a problem if there is inductance and resistance why why will the ground potential not be the same correct so fundamentally your ground is actually the return path so if you have some vdd here so you may have some something like this some connection like this right so your current is actually flowing like this okay in this case your bias current okay so what happens is there is some current flowing through those inductors and resistors in your ground path so which means there is going definitely going to be a dc drop there is going to be a difference in the voltage so the actual vo you get will no longer be minus r2 over r1 so if you if i say that um, if i call this vi prime oops sorry if i call this vi prime your actual vo prime with respect to whatever ground is there will be minus r2 over r1 times vi prime not vi right okay the second problem is that the current through this ground line is not just defined only by your circuit alone you could have some other circuit here whose current is also returning through the same line 
Okay, so the drop is not even defined by parameters in your circuit, it's defined by something else outside. Okay, that is an even bigger problem. Okay, so this is the motivation for designing fully differential circuits. Okay, which means you want to make your circuit less sensitive to any variations in, in this case ground, but in general to any common mode signal. Okay. For example, so let us say you have some two signal lines here. You have some minus VD by 2. Let us say you have some, some other line, some routing on a different metal layer going across these two lines. Okay and that has some load capacitance, let's say CL. So these two guys are going to have some capacitance CC, let's say equal capacitance. So let us assume we didn't have the you know negative line, so we had only V bias plus VD by 2. What is the voltage coupled on to that, uh, to the line in red? What is the voltage coupled on to that? What is it? Okay. VD. Correct? Is that right? What is the voltage coupled here? If you add the second line, the differential line, minus of the same thing because now you have minus VD by 2 there. In other words, what I am saying is I have a capacitance here I have a signal here what is the signal at the common point? There is no change, right? You have equal and opposite currents being generated by these two signals, correct? So, this is like a virtual ground, it is like a symmetric point with respect to your differential circuit. So now, obviously to take full advantage of this, you need to get a fully differential, you know, circuit which is succeeding this. Okay, so this is an advantage for the line. What if there is a signal here and what about coupling to this? Good question. So let us say there is a signal on this line. What is the signal coupled to this? Well, there will be some, let us say this is succeeded by some other circuit, there is going to be some other capacitance uh, CP, let us say. Now it will be CC over CC, uh, CP plus CC times, okay? The, the whatever signal is on this line, correct? Now, to make sure you are not sensitive to that, you need to make sure you access the two lines differentially. That is, it needs to be followed by a differential amplifier. Right? Because the same signal would be coupled to this as well as to this. And if you have a fully differential amplifier, it would amplify ideally the difference between the two lines. So, it would completely cancel out whatever signal is coupled. Correct? Okay. So, now we know, so there are, you know, several cases where you have to, I mean, this is quite important because the signal coupling in could be uh, anything. It could be uh, on the line, it could be the, uh, whatever signal is running on the line. It could be noise, right? There are circuits, of course, which dump noise into ground. So, you don't want that noise to get coupled into your circuit. So, there are a number of reasons. Okay. Now, before we look at these fully differential circuits, we need to make a small distinction between two kinds of circuits. So, let us take a diff amp which we have seen before several times. So, 
so this is going to be v bias plus v i by 2, v bias minus v i by 2. Okay. What is V O? What is the gain of the circuit? G M R L times V I. Okay. <laughs> now suppose I increase V bias. What happens? What happens to V O? Why does GM increase? I am increasing V bias. Why does GM increase? I am taking the same circuit, I am just increasing V bias at the input, the input common mode voltage. What happens? Nothing. Right? The extra voltage just gets dropped across the current source. Okay? So this particular circuit Okay, well, first of all, gain is definitely insensitive. Okay, what else? How about the output common mode? Is that sensitive to V bias? What happens to the output common mode if I keep increasing V bias? Well, not keep increasing, if I increase it. It stays the same. So, first order, again, it stays the same. Okay? So both of these are quite insensitive. So this is an example of a fully differential circuit. Okay. So let's take the same thing as a very similar circuit. Yeah. Give me a second. Yes. Sorry? Sure. Okay, it, you may go out of saturation, but I am assuming for, you know, for reasonable changes. Okay, I am not saying, uh, you know, you keep increase. Yeah, yeah, if you keep changing it, definitely something will happen, right? We know that. But I am talking about reasonable changes. Okay? What is VO here? What is VO? GMRL times VI. The same as before. Okay? So if I increase V bias now, what happens? GM changes. So definitely the gain will change. Okay, what else? The bias current changes, so definitely the output common mode is going to change. So definitely this circuit, sensitive to, definitely sensitive to V bias changes. Now suppose instead of just V bias, I had V bias plus V i by 2. I added a common mode signal to both sides. It's a signal, not DC. What happens to VO? VO stays the same as long as it's differential. Okay. However, so, so this particular circuit is called a pseudo differential circuit because so even though yeah you can get a differential output which is similar to the other case it does amplify some kinds of common modes, right? In fact, it does amplify a certain kind of common mode. How do you find out the co find out the common mode gain of a circuit? Normally, let's say you have a circuit with two inputs and two outputs and so on, a differential amplifier. How do you find out the common mode gain? How do you find out the differential mode and common mode gains? What do you do? You what? Take the average. In other words, what you would do is, 
you would short the two inputs, short the two outputs and then take the average, right, that will be the gain, correct? You short the two inputs, that means you basically apply the same common mode, short the two outputs and find out the common mode voltage. What is it in this case? What is it? Zero, why? Because you have an ideal current source, the minute you short it, it's like being degenerated with an infinite impedance. Any signal change you do, there will never be any current which flows through the circuit. There can be never any common mode signal current. So the common mode gain of this is zero. Ideally, if your current source has some resistance RSS, let's say, then you can calculate the GM over 1 plus GM RSS would be the transconductance times RL would give you the gain. Now you can find out your common mode rejection. So this particular circuit has common mode rejection. What is the uh, common mode gain of this circuit? It's GMRL. So the common mode gain is the same as the differential mode gain for this circuit. Right? So that's why we call it a pseudo differential instead of a true differential circuit because it actually has common mode gain and its CMRR is, it has no CMRR. Whereas the other case has very large CMRR. Similarly, if you take let's say a bunch of these circuits and cascade them, right? What happens eventually, so this will have some certain CMRR, the next circuit will have more CMRR, eventually the common mode signal will completely die out. Only the differential mode signal is propagated if you have something like this, a cascade of circuits like this, right? Okay, so in other words, so so you want to make it insensitive to common mode signals, right? So all kinds of stuff. Okay, so let's go back to your. Now specifically with respect to op amps, okay, we just looked at a differential amplifier. Specifically with respect to op amps, actually I should uh, call it fully differential op amps. What is VO for the op amp? What is the general expression if you are trying to design an op amp? Omega U by F times VI, the VI of S, that's what you want. Okay? So similarly, even for the fully differential case, So you want something like this, right? That's your final goal to design something like this. So let's go back to our example. You had R1. This is an inverting amplifier. You had VI and VO. So how do you do the same thing here? What, how do you do this, this kind of inverting amplification in the case of the fully differential? Let us say I want the same thing, I want minus connect plus and connect plus and minus. What will that give you? That will give you a unity gain configuration. Right? You want to connect it through a resistor I assume, I hope. Right? You would probably do something similar. You would try to do something similar. Except now to make sure you are giving negative feedback, you need to make sure 
that you are feeding maths from the negative output to the positive output and vice versa correct is that clear ok so this is R1 the same R2 ok yes yes which should be it is minus R2 over R1 correct why should it be minus R2 over 2 why you have you have minus vi over 2 you have minus uh, plus vi over 2 minus vi over 2 right on each side correct and you have plus v over 2 minus v over 2 why should it be any different ok so now specifically getting back to the insides of this op amp so what did we start off with for the single ended op amp we started off with we started off with an active load yes if you don't do if you don't give if you give feedback only to one side right then what will happen is you would you would have a completely imbalanced case right first of all you need to give some kind of feedback right we already decided that with respect to op amps you need because you can never use it in open loop okay you need to give some kind of feedback for a number of reasons you need your dc to be settled your actual gain is you want to make it insensitive to you know process uh, temperature and so on if you do it only for one side and do, don't do it for the other side you would have a completely imbalanced case right you would have on one side you would have a lot of gain you would have like an open loop op amp on the other side you have a closed loop op amp actually i don't know what will happen i've never uh, i've never tried that okay So we started off with something like this with an active load right what is the advantage of the active load fundamentally you get a large very large output impedance for a very low voltage compliance right so if you had to let's say if you wanted uh, 1 mega ohm and let's say the current was some 30 microamps how much voltage would you need if you had a resistor you would need 30 volts ok whereas if you use a if you use a current source how much do you need let us say this uh, you know let us say your uh, VGS was for the 30 microamps was 1 volt and VT was point half a volt how much voltage do you need Point 0.5 volts. You need VDSAT, so you need only half a volt. So it's actually much much better. Okay. This is your voltage compliance. What do you lose? By going towards an active load, it seems like you know everything looks good, right? Voltage compliance is better. Area probably is much better because now you are using the RDS instead of using a physical 1 mega ohm resistor which may be huge why ok so let us say you can bias this ok so away from VD side if you want output swing you know you can bias this slightly better than VD side and swing larger ok so that is one thing for very large swings you would re your resistor would probably be better because when you have no current you would you know you would go all the way to VDD you could swing all the way the other way here whereas you can go only till VD sat ok so that is one problem ok anything else what changes with the current the RDS changes with current but that's ok because you normally you design these circuits to operate at a particular bias current so that is not a problem you are uh, you know ideally if you are designing this designing an op amp you want to make sure the bias current does not vary over process or temperature or anything right so that is not a problem yes noise 
So what is the noise? If you have a 1 mega ohm resistor, what is the noise? Spoke AD by R, that's the noise power, noise power cycle density. Correct? What is it in this case? So I'll call it, I'll just call it 8KT, 3, uh, 8KT by 3 times GM. Right? So I can, I'll rewrite this. So we know that the RDS of this is the same as this R. Okay? So I'll rewrite this as something like this. Okay? So in other words, in one case you had 4 kT by R, the other case you have some 8 kT by 3 RDS, which is similar, they are similar numbers, times GM RDS. So the noise of this active load is definitely going to be much larger. Okay? Than if you use a physical resistor. Correct? GM is nothing but 2 ID over VD sat. Correct? So suppose I want to operate at lower and lower voltages. What happens? I need to decrease VD sat more and more. Right? What happens when you decrease VD sat? Your GM increases for the same current. Which means your noise is going to increase. So when you are trying to push voltage, the active load, the noise penalty keeps getting worse, not better. Okay? Okay, so we started off using this active load in your single ended op amp. How do you use it in the differential op amp? Any suggestion? Just use a current mirror. Okay. Sorry? The drain to the uh, gate. Okay. So let's assume we don't connect. I'm not going to connect it as you, as you mentioned. Yeah. call this M1, M2, M3, M4. Okay. So what do you do with the gate? You have to do something with the gate. Okay. Bias it with what? A current mirror. Something like this. Okay. What should this current be? I naught by 2. So let us say I am I call this I naught. Okay. So this is a circuit. Okay. What is the problem? Is there a problem? Huh? What gain becomes half? Why? Now my output is going to come out from the from these two sides, the dif differential. Why does the gain become half? From both sides. In this case, you are taking a differential output. So, gain won't change. There will be no difference in? Why won't there be a differential current? So, I apply a differential, oops, sorry. I apply a differential voltage here. So, there will be a differential current flowing like this. It has to flow through the output because both are both on both sides you have current sources. So the signal current cannot flow through the current sources. So they have to flow through the output. So everything looks fine. What? Okay. 
So this is I naught. So you have I naught by two. So what happens if these two I naught, these two are not equal? Hmm? What happens if the two currents are not equal? What happens? Why? I have I naught by two, I naught by two. Let us say I have not connected anything at the output. A common mode signal will produce a differential voice that. So, okay. What have we done? We have not changed anything, okay? There is no output load. Output is just open uh, open circuit, okay? So, I have not changed anything. All I have done is I have removed the gate, you know, gate ring connection here. So, I used to have this. I have removed that. I have biased it separately. I have not, not made any other changes. What happens when the, yeah? Let's assume there is no common mode signal. Right now there is no common mode signal. PMOSs may go to triode. Why is that? Okay, so let me call this. Uh, instead of calling it I naught by two, let me call this. Uh, let me call this I three four, and let me call this uh, I one two. Okay. Okay. So if I three four is greater than I one two, what happens? The VGS of the P MOSFET. What will happen? Okay, it will be greater. Fine. So what? Okay. So the VGS is uh, rightly defined by this uh, M6. Let, let me call this M6. VGS is defined by M6. That cannot change because you are passing a current through a uh, you know diode connected transistor. VGS cannot change. VGS3, sorry, VGS34 cannot change. So what can affect the current? What, how, how can the current in a in a transistor change? If you have a, if you take a MOSFET, okay. When can the current current through it change? Let's say VGS is held constant. Drain voltage. Okay. What do you know about the drain node? How does it affect your uh, bias current? It actually has a very very small effect on bias. Normally we actually neglect it. Right? So if there is even some amount of mismatch between you know I34 and I12, the only way that can change is for M3 and M4 to go into triode. For so the I3, I4 will reduce. Correct. So if the mismatch was even appreciable, not just a small amount, but you know, a, a more reasonable amount, the only way the current can change so much through three and four is for them to go into triode. In other words, the output common mode will rise so much that it will send M3, M4 into triode, but KCL will still be valid here, right? So that the two currents will become equal. Correct. What will happen if I12 is larger than I34? Exactly opposite. Common mode will start to come down. Okay. So this is a very very bad way of. Oops, sorry. Very very bad way of biasing it. This is not a good way. Definitely. Okay. Because you can never guarantee the two I0 by 2s to be equal. Okay. What else can you do? Bias it. Which in which manner? Okay, so this W over L, you want this to be half of this. This guy. No, no, that's okay. That's not a problem. See, I can make this P mod to be. Uh, you mean half of this? Okay, then. Okay, so that is one way you can do. You can what you can do is you can take this guy, put it here, use the same current flowing through both. That may be one way. How do you generate a current source which is floating like that? You 
definitely not easy not for a dc bias current now what you can do is maybe just add a resistor for example okay those come with other issues we'll discuss them so now what you're doing is your bias current is completely sensitive to vdd now because now you have vdd you have a diode you have a resistance you have a diode again right so it's any if you have any common mode signal on vdd or ground that will directly get into your circuit you also don't want that what else can you do you don't want to do it this way but you want to generate this voltage yes you want to use an nmos okay so what you are suggesting is okay so instead of doing this you just want to connect an nmos here maybe just do this so let me call this m7 what happens if there is a mismatch in m5 and m between uh, okay i will call this m0 what if there is a mismatch between m7 and m0 same problem right fundamentally it is not a problem with generating a new current source the problem is that you can never ever generate two currents which are exactly equal you can make them closer and closer maybe you can use a cascode current source you can make it a little bit better matching right but first of all random mismatches you cannot do you can't do much right you can't do much about random mismatches at all and fundamentally what you are trying to do here is you are this is what you are trying to do okay so i'll call this in ip you are trying to match these two currents ip and in if there is any small mismatch between them the current flows through this into their own output impedances which are very large and it produces a very large voltage right any time there is a difference between ip and in and because rp and rn you design them fundamentally to have very large output impedances you can't do much about this right even smaller so why do you need to generate make rp and rn very small you want your dc gain to be very large right yes can you use what sorry we are not actually no we are not because literally see the random mismatch literally means you know even there you we talked about 3/4 and 1/4 right it's never going to be exactly 3/4 and exactly 1/4 but there you don't care because if it's 180 microamps or 179 microamps you don't care much right because it's going to change your gm by maybe 1% or half a percent you don't care right see let us say let us go back to our original case a single ended op amp let us say we had something like this and you are trying to define an i not let us say which was uh, 30 microamps or uh, in this case okay let's say 60 microamps we going back to 30 through the p mosfet okay what happens if there is a mismatch between m0 and m5 let us say there is a 1% mismatch let's say this is supposed to be 1 is to 1 what happens if there is a small mismatch so instead of 60 it becomes 59 Okay so what your gm changes by some you know maybe 1 1 point something percent your gain dc gain instead of uh, uh, you know 30 db it may be 29.5 db or something instead of 2000 it may be like 1900 does it make a difference no right in that case if you had you know you want to make it as you know you want to reduce mismatches for sure but at the end of the day you have to live with very small mismatches but you don't care too much but in this particular case you do care because it is affecting the performance of your circuit so what do you do okay so let's uh, you want to generate this voltage okay and at the same time you also want to set the output common mode voltage correct 
So let us say I take these two voltages. So let us say this was VOP, VOM. I put it through, I need some kind of circuit which detects. So it goes back, yes. Because it gives you a single ended output, right? Okay. If you want a differential output, you could do this, I suppose. Right, what's the problem with this? It has very small gain. What else? Output impedance is low. What else? Your voltage output voltage swing limits are now quite low. Right, because you are tying it to uh, VGS of a transistor. So you definitely don't want to do this. Okay. Well, there is one kind of thing, okay, we will we'll come to this, may, uh, but there is one kind of circuit which uses something similar, okay, similar to this, we will we'll see, we will see if we can come by, uh, come up with that circuit through uh, other means, okay. So, let us say you have a common mode detector, what is going to be the output of the common mode detector? If the two outputs are VOP and VON, what is the output of that? VON plus VOP by 2. What do we do? Remember what we, what did we do for the bipolar case? Bipolar case we had to say similar kind of problem, right? We wanted to, we had a current mirror at the bottom, right? We had some kind of similar thing. What did we do there? We used a common mode feedback circuit, correct? Some kind of indirect biasing scheme where we didn't let the, uh, you know, the, uh, the PMOS, sorry, the PNP basis, we biased it using some kind of indirect common mode feedback scheme, correct? We will do the same thing here. What do you do? So, I will call this some output common mode. I can do this, correct? What will this feedback circuit do? First of all, uh, yeah, what will this feedback circuit do? Suppose I have some scheme like this, I have a common mode detector, something which senses the level of the, you know, common mode level at the output, okay? And I am going to compare it to some, uh, well, sorry, I should call it reference. So, this is the reference. So, what does this do? This is going to adjust the currents through the PMOSes, M3 and M4 such that these two voltages are equal, right? In other words, sorry, how do we know that? What is, no, what I mean is you take the circuit, ideally what do you want this output uh, common mode to be? Yeah, so let us say you uh, ignore this VD sat. You want it to be VDD by 2, somewhere close to the middle of the supply. So, your reference VOCM ref would probably be somewhere around VDD over 2, right? Somewhere around VDD over 2, let us say, ideally if you want maximum, you know, swing limits on both sides, okay? So, what will this do? This will set the output common mode to somewhere whatever VOCM ref and adjust the gate voltage of the PMOSes accordingly, of 3 and 4 accordingly. What should be the sign of the op amp? Hmm? Should it be plus minus or minus plus? Minus plus, why is that? So let us say this is constant, this is fixed. So let us say this tends to rise. So I think you, you said it should be minus plus, is that right? Okay. So let us say it's plus minus. What happens? 
this voltage tends to increase, current decreases, therefore the output common mode tends to decrease, correct? So that makes sense, okay, okay, so this kind of circuit works well, yes. Gate set voltage decreases, right? It's a PMOS. Okay. Okay, let's come to this common mode detector. What kind of circuit would you use? Huh? What would you use for this circuit? For what do you want? Inputs are VOP, VON. Output is VOP plus VON by 2. A rectifier. A rectifier. Where did you get that from? These are DC. Okay. You want to get the VON, the DC voltage or some common mode voltage, right? In this case, DC. Let's assume there are no other common mode voltages. Right? Okay. So the first thing you would think of. So let's say this VOP. I will call this RCM. What is this voltage? VOP plus VON over 2. Correct? So this is a case of resistive sensing. Now there are some certain disadvantages with this. What are the disadvantages? It is going to try to draw some current. Okay? The other it is going to definitely going to try to draw some signal current, right? DC, even if, if everything is well matched, maybe DC current output DC is maybe matched, okay? But, so this thing makes sure that even if output DC is not matched, you get the common mode, okay? But, assume that DC is matched, you are basically connecting a resistor between, you know, VOD by 2 and minus VOD by 2, so you will have, a, you could have a signal current through this. So what does it mean? RCM should be very large, right? What is the problem if you try to make a very large resistor? Really? Now you should actually get better I would think. Area is the problem, okay. What else? When you try to make large resistors, they come with in their own inherent parasitic capacitance. I think we discussed this, right? The size, for very small resistors it's easy to make. When you want to go to very large resistors, you typically have to go to certain kinds of resistors which have large parasitic capacitances, either by virtue of their size or by the type of resistor you use. For example, the NL resistor. Okay? We are not even going there, right? Of course, there could be mismatch between the resistors. So, how will that affect it? Let's say there is a mismatch between the resistors. Yeah, so now the average will depend. Yeah, you will get more weightage from one side than the other side. Right? But typically, remember, when you have, when you are just using resistors or capacitors or anything, when you depend on the ratio of resistors or ratio of capacitors, you can get them to be as good as, you know, as you can. As good as, that's probably the best matching you can get ratio of resistors or ratio of capacitors or right ratio of passive components okay what else what do you do with the amplifier first of all do you need a lot of gain from this amplifier why not what is the gain of this amplifier what is the gain of okay so now you have a common mode feedback loop what is the gain of this common mode feedback loop? Let's say the open loop, the loop gain. So I have a amplifier of gain A, let's say. You have the GM RDS, GM R out of M3, M4. Right, you already have, probably have considerable gain from there. So it may be okay if you don't have a lot of gain from A. Okay. So let us say you don't have any gain. What can you do? 
Maybe a source follower? Can you use a source follower? Actually you can. What is the problem with the source follower? We discussed this file uh, two weeks back. Shifts the DC level. Right? So you, you basically remember, we did this several weeks back. If you have, so, if you have something like this, the output string is very good. Because you can go to VD side, it looks like it's very good. But to reach that, you know, potential v swing, this needs to swing above VDD. Remember this, we calculated this. Right? So source follower is probably a bad idea because now you are applying that <laughs> at the output. Because now we have, let's say we are starting off with the resistive sensing. Okay? You don't want to apply a source follower there. What can you do? Do you actually need an amplifier there? What happens if you completely remove the amplifier? What do you do? Suppose I do this, what happens? Very similar to a diode connected transistor, right? Very similar. You won't get, you won't get gain. First of all, by the way, I didn't even uh, uh, forgot to mention this. In this particular case, when you do this diode connection, you are basically creating a short between the two outputs. I didn't even, uh, we didn't even talk about that, right? Whereas in this particular case, you are not creating a short, but you are still sensing the common mode and feeding it back. So, you probably don't get a lot of gain, but the same, you know, other disadvantages are similar between the two cases. Correct? You can't get a lot of gain, first of all. What else, what else did we discuss for the other case? Swing limits are a problem, you are now biasing it at the VGS of these guys. Okay? Okay, so what we'll do is we'll stop here and maybe next class we'll continue with this and look at other schemes. So of course, by the way, you don't have to use physical resistors. You can use a MOSFET in the, in, in the triode region, for example. Right? So that will come with less, you know, less probably less parasitic capacitance and less area. Okay?